Island. Did it work? Yes. <laughs> okay. My mind is blown. <laughs> wasn't sure how, how it how it would do. I, I'm I'm not getting a whole lot of feedback here, so I have to go on on faith alone. <laughs> yep. Sounded good. Looked good. All right. I didn't know you had the Star Wars uh, studio coming up with our intros. I I bought them. Uh, Lucas oh. Lucasfilm. Yeah. Nice. I mean, nice. We're doing well, so two dollars and ninety nine cents. That's right. Well, uh, that's a pretty cool info th uh, intro. Thank you for that, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank you all for joining us on this episode of Chill with Jim, where it's always business up top and pajamas on the bottom. So today we're, uh, we're going to be having another good chill episode. Um, I'm your host, Jim McCarthy, and I am the client advocate for Strix, Louisiana. So it's my job to make sure that our clients are set up with the best equipment, the best software, and the best IT solutions that are out there to make sure that their businesses are running at the best efficiencies ever. <laughs> oh, you changed it up there. Yes, I wanted to just a little bit. Um, <laughs> we also have David DeArmond with us, the owner of Strix, Louisiana. Yeah, hey everybody, owner David DeArmond, owner of Strix, Louisiana, and uh, I'm I'm here to to do a lot of prayer and hoping that these intros come off. Uh, that's what I've been working on all week, all week. <laughs> just making sure that the intro worked. <laughs> frame by frame yeah, yeah. hand painting those <laughs> uh so a little bit about strix besides we work on intros week in and week out um at strix we do believe there's always a better simpler more secure way and so what that means is we are constantly searching and adapting our processes to make sure that we do have the best solutions in place. We also believe that part of this responsibility is to help educate our clients as well as others out there the best use of their current resources. Uh, maybe it's bring some awareness to current security risks out there and just talk a little bit about what's happening in the IT world today. So today we're going to be having a uh, kind of a insider look at um, what is called the kill chain. And we're, gonna, we're going to, uh, this is such a kind and gentle name. So I'm looking to this very lighthearted subject. Um, we're gonna just uh, kind of bounce some questions off of one of our security geniuses, uh, David, and get to know more about what a kill chain is and how we can all protect ourselves. So that's the plan for today. And again, thank you everybody for joining me. So David, what is a kill chain and why is it important for me to know what that's all about? Well, it, it's, it's very simply just one of the coolest names for something in security that, that's out there. <clears throat> I mean, you, you've got names like ransomware and phishing, and those are cool. I mean, those, those are those are nice, but kill chain. Kill chain. Like, yeah, that, that sounds dangerous. And uh, really what, what the what the kill chain is, is, is uh, it, it's a pathway. It, it, it's the path that most cyber attacks follow. And, and so how does how does a hacker, how does a, a cyber attacker what steps do they take in order to uh, accomplish what it is that they're trying to accomplish? And it, it, um, it, it really came out of uh, a need in the, in the cybersecurity world to, to get a, an idea of how to protect against cyber attacks. And so they, they started breaking it down and well, here are the phases that 
that generally a cyber attack follows. And so now we can look at each of those phases and say, well, how do we protect ourselves against each of those phases? How do we recognize when those phases are happening and, and what do we need to do to make sure that those things don't happen? Okay, okay. So, you know, typically, you know, how does this work? So how, what's that process look like? How's the kill chain initiate and, and what are some of those stages? Yeah, well, it, 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 the, the, the names and the number of stages kind of vary. Uh, it, it depends on uh, who you're talking to or, or maybe how far back in history it goes. Um, the, the general idea, it, it, if you look at kind of the most basic kill chain, uh, it, it's, it's recognized in about three phases, three, three steps. There's the reconnaissance phase, the infiltration phase where they're getting in, and then the conclusion, whatever, whatever it is that the cyber attacker was doing, they, they conclude. Um, so that that's kind of your most basic look at at a kill chain but you you see others um the i i would say the the newer than the newer one than the three had seven or has seven uh again it starts with reconnaissance it, it always starts with reconnaissance um okay. and then getting into weaponization delivery exploitation installation command and control and actions and objectives. So that that's the the seven phase version of of kill chain. But really, that that one uh, it 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 almost represents cyber attacks from maybe five to ten years ago. And, okay. and so that was more the approach uh, five to ten years ago. What what we see now and and what is kind of a, a the most modern, I guess, uh, kill chain phases is eight. And so again, it starts with reconnaissance. So that that everything again, it always starts with reconnaissance. But then you get into intrusion, exploitation, privilege escalation, uh, lateral movement. That's a big one. Uh, obfuscation, anti forensics. It's hiding your tracks, um, and then denial of service and exfiltration. So again, you know, we we get into some some. You know, big multi-syllable words in there but um, <laughs> the 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 point is is really it still gets back to to those initial three it's reconnaissance installation or infiltration and then conclusion getting out with whatever it is that that the cyber attacker wanted to do okay okay so let's go with the newest eight stage can you just Give us a little more of a detail um, kind of breakdown of each of those stages so we can under, better understand some of those multi-syllable words that you just yeah. threw at us. Yeah, so again, we, we started there with reconnaissance um, and, and all of them start with reconnaissance. And, and this is, this is an, an interesting one. It, it's a very important one. And if you're talking about a, a cyber attack where someone uh, is specifically going after a target. So, you know, we, we've got Harley and I think David here in the near future, they are pen testers um, and, and they're going to be targeting people. You know, they're, they're getting paid to see, can they break into something? The first thing they're going to do is start getting a lay of the land of, of, that, of, that, um, of their target. There is an unbelievable amount of public information out there uh, it's called passive reconnaissance, where you're just going and, and you're looking for as much information as you can get. You're looking at social media, uh, you're looking at at DNS records, um, you're looking at addresses, Google Maps, just to see what's around. Uh, so that that is the reconnaissance phase, and, and it's really just about getting information. You can you can go a little bit deeper as well. You can do active reconnaissance, and and so those guys probably do that as well. Where you may actually call the um, call your target, and and you may just ask some very specific questions. Uh, you can pretend to be maybe making a a sales call or or a customer call, and and you're you're asking questions to get what kind of information can I pull. Um, you know who, who's the CEO? What what do they like to do? Or or where is maybe a vulnerability that that I can pick on? 
and you haven't done really anything technical yet. It, there's there's no um, there's no programs necessarily that you're running. You're just grabbing information. So that that again that that's kind of the the biggest point right there is is reconnaissance and and there is a ton of time spent on that. And and I mentioned that you know there's a difference between targeting someone and then what what a typical small business is going to experience where the reconnaissance phase is. It, it, it's much more bland. Um, they uh, uh, for for a typical small business cybersecurity attack, it's a blast. And what what the cyber attackers know is that I'm going to blast it out to you know ten thousand people. What I know is that there there's a percentage of them that are going to fit what it is that I'm looking for. So rather than going and and looking for something specific, you you have something specific as a cyber attacker. And you know that there's going to be a certain percentage of the population that fits that by default, and so you just blast it out, and and whoever uh, whoever fits that description, your attack is going to work. So that's a that's kind of the the beginning of it, um, the reconnaissance phase. Then you get into well, how are you going to get into the systems, um, and and so you see here why the the initial three three phases of reconnaissance and then installation and conclusion, they're not enough because when you get into the seven and eight stages, you start talking about weaponization. Uh, so that is taking all of that information that, um, excuse me, that all of the information that you got in reconnaissance and you turn it into an attack, an, an actual real attack. And so you're weaponizing that information. Uh, you may, you may pick the certain tools that you're going to use, but weaponization is still kind of happening before you actually hit uh, the the target. What you're just you're getting all of that information ready to use in a cyber attack, and then that's when okay. you get that that's when you get into actually breaking into things, and um and you get into the the intrusion side of things, delivering what it is that your 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 payload or whatever it may be um, and and that's where you get into these other steps that we talked about there's there's you know we we have a uh, delivery exploitation installation on on the seven stages you have um, exploitation again in, intrusion exploitation privilege escalation lateral movement and and those are getting a little bit more specific on tactics that you would use, and it kind of depends on what is the cyber attacker trying to do. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, you know, the it, it, each of those, um, wh what are you, what are you going to see from from each of those? The the cyber attacker is going to try to keep you from seeing as much as possible. Uh, their goal is to get a foothold. And they're they're gonna they're gonna get in and 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 I, I like the the um, the lateral movement so the the privilege escalation and lateral movement that that's a huge piece especially of what we're seeing today with with ransomware um, where the attack may start and it, it, this is this is where a, a lot of people don't understand what's happening an attack may start with the receptionist and everybody's well the receptionist. You know that 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 person they don't have access to much data anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not that big of a deal, right? Well, that what what the attacker is doing, they're getting a foothold right there. Now they're you know they're they're getting inside your systems, and then they're going to start working their way. How can they how can they um, elevate their privileges? How can they get a little bit more access? And and that can be through exploitations. Uh, if you're not keeping your systems up to date, they may find a, a, a server or one of those computers that nobody wants to update because it's got that that specific piece of of, uh, of software that only works when you um, it, 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 it only works with you know Windows Seven and and we we can't update it. A hacker's going to find that. They're going to do a little scan from the receptionist computer and they're going to find that and then they're going to exploit that machine and that machine has a few more privileges. And it's got a, a, a little bit more uh, a, a ability to, to, to see things within the network. And then they'll use that 
and spread. So they, they get the, the privilege escalation and then the lateral movement where they're moving throughout the network. Uh, Harley, you said, can you give an example of a, a vision call we performed during the recon phase? I'd love that. So yeah, yeah. go ahead, unmute yourself and, and tell us about it. Well, what's up guys? Um, hey, Harley. Hey, hey, hey. So I, we were doing a, a pin test against a client and social engineering was in scope and those are always my favorite. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but we had a, we had, we were completely black box. So that means we didn't have any information about who they were other than the company name. Um, and phishing was in scope where we send emails that might contain malicious links. And so was vishing, which is doing the same thing, but over the phone and just trying to get information out of people. Um, and we wanted to start by just figuring out, well, who, who are our targets going to be? So the, this particular customer, um, I guess it's not necessarily a vishing call because um, what we did is we went to their online website and this was still early on. We were doing the recon, right? Trying to figure out email addresses and phone numbers and things like that. And they had a customer support chat that we could message them because they did a, you know, it was like a, uh, it was an online retailer for like e-commerce. And we, you know, talked about an order or whatever. And at the end of the conversation, with a customer support rep, we said, hey, you did a great job. Can you tell me your manager's name? So that way we nice. can praise and you know give you good feedback. And she's like, oh, sure, here you go. And then we're like, okay, great. What's a phone number for us to contact them? What's an email address we can reach them at? And all of that information yeah. was protected behind, you know, like they didn't make that public. It was really hard for us to find that online, but just by having a conversation with someone and, and asking, hey, can you share this information? We want to tell them what a great job you're doing. Now we had a perfect target we could go and do like vishing and fishing against later. So, and, and that's part of the recon phase. I just wanted to give an example of like a real thing yeah. that we do as pin testers, but definitely something that attackers are doing too. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Harley. Yeah, that just that shows you like how how tricky it can be and, and how easy it could be to just fall a victim to it too, because you know, you, you think you're talking to one person or you just have an employee that is, you know, maybe she, they're just a temp, temp worker or uh, they just don't know. You get them on the phone like that. Um, but yeah, that reconnaissance stage. So very important. Um, and I liked your description of the lateral movement as well gave us a good picture of how that works. And it could be any, it really can be a multitude of devices, right? It doesn't just have to be a computer, David. Yeah, well, and, and that's that's one of the big threats out there today are the IoT devices, the internet of things, because those don't necessarily come with, with a whole lot of, of security, and but they, they're very often internal in the, in the network. And that's why most, uh, recommendations now are you got to make sure that that your IoT devices are segmented from the from the rest of the network um, because they're they're just they're a gaping hole in security and and that's going to be used uh, uh, an exploit that's available for that IoT device um, it, it will be will be targeted um, the exploit will be run the the hacker will get some sort of access there and then be able to move into other parts of the network and, and do what it is that they're trying to do, which is, you know, that's getting into the next steps of, of the kill chain where, where they're actually performing action. And this is where you, you see some difference between uh, the, the seven stage version of kill chain, which is command and control, which still happens um, with like with, with ransomware, people don't understand that, that, that ransomware it's just, it's really one piece. And, and there's all these steps that happened before. Uh, they, they use multiple programs, TrickBot, Emotet, to, to get into the machine, to move laterally, and then to command and control. So they gain some sort of control over the machine, um, which can include knocking other people out. So that's when, that's when you get into, we mentioned denial of service earlier. Right. You, you, you may, uh, it, it, there's some very, fun stories where um, they'll, they'll knock somebody off of a machine. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do something that is going to then require an admin to come onto that machine and do something. And what they've done, they, they've loaded a keylogger. So let's say the receptionist computer, they, they break something, uh, but they've loaded a, a keylogger and it's, it's running quietly in the background. Now, every keystroke is gonna be logged 
and sent back to the hacker, the, um, the, the admin comes in, oh, I know how to fix this. This is easy to fix. I'll just uh, put in my admin password. It just, it needs that to run. And okay, that is done. And uh, yeah, you're fixed, good to go. All right. Yeah. Well, now the hacker has has admin privileges. They they have the password for admin. Um, that that's a uh, a a newer suggestion, at, at least to me. I, I'd say in the last you know uh, six to, to to twelve months that has come out that is almost a necessity is that every single computer uh, on a network needs to have a unique admin username and password. And you know, it, it, for for an MSP, for a service provider, for any company, it was almost always you, you, you use the same admin username and password. You protect it, but you use it throughout, um, it just just to be able to to manage the computers easier. Well, that that behavior is picked on now. Uh, if you use that same information over and over, a hacker will get it once, and now they've got access to everything. So, uh, another another change in, in the way that, that service providers and, and IT uh, service departments have to manage their, their networks. Yeah, that's a great point. And so what David was talking about earlier is, is with the internet of things, those are just devices, phones, tablets that people are gonna bring to work or have on the network. And what he's talking about is separating them. So you would have, maybe if you have a Wi-Fi you set up the Wi-Fi to have its own network where that's where anything that's um, a phone, a tablet, it logs onto that network. It's separate from all of the other things that are on the business network, which is very important to do because you do not want, you know, everybody's phone, everybody's, you know, tablet is basically, you know, an, an iPad is basically a computer. So it's the same thing. It's just um, people don't think they need to protect them if they're on the, the network. Oh, it's just my iPad. I don't need to protect it. So yeah, what are some? Uh, of, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Harley. Yeah, you, you said you have so many, so many stories. I, I imagine uh, in all your time as an MSP and as a as a pen tester, you um, you've got some good stuff for us. Well, I definitely wanted to share about a local admin thing, you know, password reuse, that thing when you were talking about that. But then when Jim started talking about separating your networks, I, this is one of my favorite <laughs> stories. This was before I even became a pen tester. I was just learning about it. Um, I went on vacation and I was staying in an Airbnb in Southern Oregon. And the Airbnb host, he basically was a small business. It was a small business where he did like printing services. And then attached to that, he had this loft. And that's what he rented out as the Airbnb. Um, and he was being really generous, you know, like letting his guests from Airbnb come in and connect to Wi-Fi. And he even gave them an Ethernet cable to connect straight into a wired connection on the network. Um, but what I found is, you know, I, I get there, I'm supposed to be on vacation, but I see this, I'm like, I got I to gotta take a look. <laughs> so, so I plug into the network and immediately I realize, wow, I'm not the only device on this network. Um, and a quick, a quick look around and, you know, I see at least a dozen other computers and I saw a server and I was like, this is, a, this is that business right next to me. Um, and one of the machines on the network was vulnerable to Eternal Blue, which is the big, you know, WannaCry ransomware outbreak story you heard in 2017. Um, and that would allow, I mean, literally point and click would allow complete compromise of that system, which then you could escalate privileges and pivot around the network to other systems and just completely compromise the entire network. And he was giving his guests on Airbnb <sighs> access to his business. And obviously he didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was just people just aren't aware, you know? And so I had a conversation with him about it and I gave him advice on how to segment it, but it, it makes for an awesome story that is kind of right in line with what you guys are talking about. Yeah, I mean, what you're talking about, you know, very, very poor physical security because you're, you're, you're tapping right into the network uh, and, and want to cry that that's an, that's an easy exploit to fix. You just update, update windows, exactly. um, yep. you know, so, it, and, 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 and that's really, you know, the, the, the point you, you got, you got these guys like Harley that, that will walk in and thank goodness Harley is, is a nice guy, 
uh, because you, you walk in and you just start looking. You're, you're doing reconnaissance and you're already on the inside of the network. And, and so then you find the exploits and then, you know, he, he utilized an exploit to, or, or he could have utilized an exploit to get full control of, of that machine, which is the command and control part of things. Um, yeah, and yeah, go ahead. Well, there, I was just gonna mention there, if, if, if you're listening to this and you're thinking like, oh, well, there's not people like hardly everywhere. Like you, it, I used to think that too, until I became a part of this community. And then <laughs> I, I just found we are like hackers, but the, ha the hacker mindset is everywhere. And I only know the people that are on the good side, <laughs> right? right? Just think about, think about the, the thousands of people that aren't on the good side. Um, but I make jokes with my friends, you know, we walk into a, a restaurant or whatever, and immediately we, we, we can't help but look around and see, okay, there's an access point there. And there's this open data jack here. And, and there's thousands of people, your neighbors that are just like us. Yeah. 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 And, and that's a great point. So uh, Harley, you, you mentioned, you mentioned the fact that, that you saw, well, here's a machine that's, um, that's um, vulnerable to, to Eternal Blue, how much trouble was it for you to, to figure that out? You can literally Google how to scan machine Eternal Blue <laughs> and, <laughs> and a 14 year old, you know, could figure it out in, in five minutes. There's, there's tools that are available that make it literally, like I mentioned, just point and click. Like you don't have to understand what's going on. You don't have to know what is actually happening, um, but anybody, who was curious can can take you know thirty minutes or whatever to to download the tool and run it and it's that simple. I I, I love the fact that you mentioned a fourteen year old can do it because it, it it's at that age those teenagers and it, they're curious they're smart <laughs> and they're um they like to break things you know they they like to push the limits something. yeah push the limits they they want to see what they can do. And, and they may not even be uh, trying to steal anything from you. It, right. it may just, they, they want to see what they can figure out. And, you know, they, they don't know the consequences of what they do. And they end up trashing your entire network just because, you know. They got in and they see yeah, what they that, can do. That was me. That was me in like 2011. I was a 14-year-old <laughs> kid that came across a phishing site and was immediately intrigued. And I was like, you can clone a website. What? <laughs> right. how, does this, how does this work? And I spent the next two weeks Googling, you know, how, how to make phishing websites. And I probably just destroyed my computer downloading all kinds <laughs> of malware. But, uh, but no, I mean, that that's how I got started. And so, yeah, it's, there's people out there like me for sure. Yep. Yep. Now that we scared everybody, no, no. Um, <laughs> there's people on the good side and the bad side, but yeah, no, it is funny it, um, to think about like that because I'm sure there are quite a few people that, you know, just, oh, let me see. I'm here. Let me see what the network looks like. Um, but, you know, so separating the networks one way, um, you mentioned patch management. Like, what are some of the other security measures? that can stop the kill chain. I know there's like, so they talk about some five proposed methods an organization can can take. Yeah, well, uh, you know, most of it is, a, a lot of people think, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do antivirus, right? Well, the, the thing about antivirus is in, in what we just talked about, antivirus will start triggering off at about stage four, you know, the, the phase phase four. All of these things have already happened before antivirus ever kicks off. Antivirus is, it, it's a good security system. Uh, the thing about security systems is they let you know once someone is already in your network or already in whatever it is that you're protecting. And, and so most antiviruses, they're just, they're going to let you know, okay, somebody's already in. The problem is somebody's already in and, and you want to you wanna protect uh, even before then. There, there are things you can do. Um, it, I, I think it's very interesting what, what Harley was talking about earlier, um, where the, the company was protecting the manager's information. Um, so that, that's a good step. Now, you know, do you have the training in place to, um, to and, and the plan in place to not share it when somebody says, 
hey, I sure would like to, to tell your boss how good you're doing. Um, that that gets into to more training. And, and really on the recon side, you can, you can try to, to hide some information. You can keep your domain registration private, that sort of thing, so that people don't have necessarily your, your address, your name, your address for, for your domain. Um, but a, a lot of that information is, is still going to be still going to be public. Um, the one thing that that is growing in popularity, it, it's still um, somewhat expensive to add on. So it's not necessarily a good fit for all small businesses, but your your um, your SIM systems. And so that that's your security information and event management. All right. Big, long name. S-I-E-M. It's called SIM scene. You might hear it called. Um, that is really just a, a, it's a log aggregator and it takes all of the information that's coming in because that that's what you have to to see if you want to catch a hacker in the early stages the point is seeing all of those small behaviors they're they're a needle in a haystack okay it it's mixed in with with it's like where's waldo waldo is hard to find because he's just mixed in with everybody else how, how do you find waldo well that's these these attacks and, and what a SIM does is it, it gets all of the logs and then a computer looks at it and it knows what, what an attack, look, it knows what Waldo looks like. And so it can pick out Waldo very, very quickly. Um, and, and so those systems are, are very important. And if you have sensitive data that the new CMMC requirements, if you get up to a certain maturity level, you have to have uh, something like this in place to, to protect yourself. Um, so that you know that that's that's an important step. Um, so I, I I would say I I don't know which specific five you you were um, talking about there, but it, you need the education. You need to understand what threats are out there and and how they work, uh, and then you need you need to start looking at at, at those logs at at some point. Again, it, it's a little bit beyond reach for for a lot of small businesses right now. I expect that to, to become available. Um, your, your, your good security system to let you know that that's your antivirus, your endpoint protection. Um, and then just the, the education is a, is a very, very important part. Yeah, yeah, it's a very important part because when we look at the numbers, it's always highly, highly in favor of human error every time that an attack happens and is successful. Usually it's because one of us humans opened the door for them. Um, no, the, the five methods I was talking about was is basically what you broke down in a different way, but to you know detect, so you determine the attempts, you want to scan, you want to penetrate, look for them, where they're coming from. So that's where the seam would come in. It's looking for all that. Then you deny the attackers, disrupt, you know, intercept any of the communications, degrade, so create measures that will limit the effectiveness of the attack and then deceive you want to mislead a attacker to uh, provide false information yeah the, the honey pots the honey right. pots those are so when i first learned what a honey pot was i was like what people do that that's so <laughs> cool so can you describe what a honey pot is for us yeah, well, it, it, back in back in the day before we had a bunch of chemicals to to kill uh, bugs with, people would would put a pot of honey out, and flies are attracted to the honey, right? They, they um, it, flies are a nuisance, um, but they like sweet things. They like the sugar, so they go to the honey and they go in. Well, they get stuck in the honey, and they they die there in the honey. So now you have a I, I guess a big bowl of honey and flies and cook that up later or something. I don't know. Um, but it, it, the, the same thing is, is true in the cybersecurity world where you, you create just this, this beautiful looking attack vector for, for the, uh, for the hacker. And, you know, oh, well, it, look, I, I, I've run my, my scanning tool to see what exploits th this, this machine has. And I see one and I'm going to go after it. And you go after it. Well, that was put there specifically to get a hacker to go after it. And once you go after it, well, now it's logging your IP address. It knows who you are, and it's going to share that information with the rest of the network. And the rest of the network now knows 
um, you know, okay, <laughs> block anything coming from this guy because he, he's trying to to break in, um, or or it just you know it 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 allows the the uh, the the good guys, I guess you would say, some visibility and and the the ability to to pick out that needle in a haystack. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I I remember I had a friend who had put some malicious things in his honeypot. So if they were to move it, <laughs> move it when they moved it to their computer, wreaked all kinds of havoc on them. So that's when I was like, what? Um, so uh, you know, what are some of the so if I'm working with an IT company, what are some of maybe some of the the questions that I should ask them to make sure that that my company is is covered. Um, well, um, you want to you want to make sure that again you're you're putting up the layer. So a, a lot of what you mentioned in those in those five steps, or, or part of what you mentioned there, was um, basically making it difficult on the hacker. Uh, you don't want to leave yourself wide open like like Harley found with that uh, Airbnb example, you don't want to leave yourself wide open. So what, what steps can you take to put some buffers in place? Like I said, most small businesses, they're not being specifically targeted. They're being just blasted. There are scanners running all the time. And that's what a small business is going to fall victim to is a scan that runs by and sees, here's an opening. I'm going to go through that opening uh, because I'm pretty confident that this is a small business who doesn't know any better and they they left this open. So you, you want to close all of those obvious gaps, you know, and, and so you ask your IT provider, well, what what layers of protection are we putting in place so that we're not an easy target? Um, that that's going to be the main thing. Most small businesses, they don't necessarily, the, the owners of the small business, they don't want to get into the, the nitty-gritty details of okay, well, what what antivirus tool are you using? Uh, what firewall tool? What rules do you have set up on the firewall? It, you know, can I look at can I look at your list of rules that you have set up on the <laughs> firewall? Most small businesses they, they're not going to ask those kinds of questions, um, and and wouldn't understand the answers even if they got them. But uh, you know, you you, you want to ask your IT provider what layers do I have in place, and just make sure that that you have something in place to slow those guys down. Awesome. Good answer. Good answer. Well, um, at this point, I think it's a good time to open it up to any questions we have out there or. Yeah, we, we've got a, a couple of technical guys on here, David and Harley, but we also have Carlene. And so, uh, Carlene, I, I don't know if you're in a position to, to be able to talk, but uh, just your impression of of what you're uh, what you're hearing here. Does it does it scare you or uh, so? Let us know what you think. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely scary, definitely confusing. <laughs> um. uh, what, 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 what has been the, the most confusing part? I'm very interested in, in, in that part of it because we're always trying to break it down. So is, is there something that kind of stood out to you that like, wait a minute, what are you talking about there? Um, I guess it's just very technical. It's just... I don't know. I mean, like I understand the, the antivirus and, you know, I understand what you mean by, um, you know, the antivirus, it's too late. But um, I guess what steps that me as a small business owner can take to kind of protect myself? Yeah, um, that, that, that's that's a, a great question. And, and I think really the, the, the least expensive thing that anybody can do is education. So there, there is, there, there's a core cybersecurity education that you can go out and buy, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, you, can, you can go online and just read information about cyber attacks and get that basic understanding of, of how you're being attacked and, and what you'll, you'll do. Let's say you do that, I don't know, once a week, a couple of times a month, you'll start seeing some things pop up and, and it's gonna trigger questions in your head. Well, wait a minute, based on, on my environment, my computer, am I vulnerable to that? And that's when you can ask a very specific question to your IT provider and then get some uh, another, another level of, of protection in place. So I, I would say, you know, that, that's probably the first and best thing for 
for a business owner to do, a small business owner like yourself, uh, is, is go out and just get educated. I, I, I think you know you're always on these calls, and and I hope that that is helping you be able to to recognize the the things that are that are um, out there that are coming at you. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, a lot of things make a lot more sense than they used to before I do, started doing these calls. Um, but a lot of it is, is, I guess, a little bit more technical than I'm used to trying to understand. So. Very good. Yeah. Uh, Harley, David, y'all have any more stories to, to share with us? Um, not so much stories, but just some advice for, you know, some of the general public out there. I mean, we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic. People are working from home. They're not working from the, the safety, quote unquote, of their offices right now. So the, the industry wide right now is seeing upwards of like 4,000 attacks a day, I think right now is the, is the current statistic. And a lot of it really just comes down to best practices and best behaviors. And a lot of what cybersecurity specialists seem to be struggling with is getting the staff and, and the people that are that are using the IT equipment to follow, you know, just the basic educational rules, you know, make sure your VPN is instructed, making sure that you're logging in as instructed, making sure that you're following best practices with passwords, um, making sure you're protecting against um, social attacks, you know, like Harley was talking about earlier, making sure that you're following, you know, scripts and procedures that are in place for a reason to be able to protect against the kinds of infiltration that pen testers are testing against, but also attackers are using to, to leverage their way in. So making sure that you're not giving away things that are purposefully hidden behind uh, informational walls or what have you, and just making sure you're, you're following the best practices. You know, if it sounds like a scam, probably a scam. I mean, I, I worked in restaurants for 20 years and uh, the last couple of years, there's been a, a movement of scams just tearing through restaurants uh, up and down the coast uh, where a, a group was basically social engineering their way into the restaurant uh, via phone and they'd call and they'd you know, ask for information and they'd get the names of management and leadership and then they'd call back as the management and leadership and instruct mm -hmm. restaurants to go to, you know, take the money out of the safe and go buy gift cards and give the gift card numbers to the person on the phone, you know, it sounds crazy and it sounds like who would ever do that? But there was a restaurant chain that I worked for that, you know, one of their safes got cleaned out for like $20,000 one week, you know, because they took all the deposits, they took, you know, all the money out, they took it to the store and they bought, you know, uh, I think it was Apple gift cards or something like that. And it was insane that what the people got away with. And it's just a matter of, of kind of keeping your wits about you on the phone and, and not letting somebody talk circles around you and, and talk you into doing something that you know you shouldn't do. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and education is huge. Um, yeah. But I, David, I, I like that you that you mentioned about, you know, asking, uh, calling and, and asking for the name of the manager because we, we talked earlier about the, the, you know, getting into the receptionist computer and a lot of time, the, a lot of times, the receptionist has emails back and forth to managers, to the CEO, and that's you know that's what's used very often by the hackers to to do some reconnaissance within the network and know who that CEO is. And, and that, you know, you, you, you well, talk about that gift move, card thing. How fast they move is ridiculous. We had one night where I got a call from a gentleman who said he was with the local police department. They were investigating um, a credit card fraud and they needed to look at the video. And we don't give out that information you know, at the restaurant like worked at, but we do give out the name of, of who they should speak to if there is an incident. Um, so we gave out the district manager's name and phone number. And within five, 10 minutes, they were calling back as the district manager from a phone number that matched that, that number saying that they had just received a call from the local police department. We needed to do X, Y, and Z within a 10 to 15 minute time span. So I mean, they have the tools to do this so quickly that you can't quite follow what's going on. Yeah, especially in, in a restaurant. I, I mean, that when, when, when you're serving dinner, like everything's just moving like this. 
nobody's stopping. Nobody's thinking like you, you, you got to keep moving or you won't be able to, to serve your, uh, your customers. Uh, you mentioned how fast they move. Uh, and in addition, I'd like to, to mention how patient they are. Harley, what, what is the, the average amount of, of time these days uh, before someone knows that they've actually been attacked? Do, do you remember the? It, it's like, it's, a, it's at least 300 days on average. Wow. Um, the statistic changes every year, but on average, especially when you start talking enterprise level, um, the statistic shows it's like 300 days uh, t- go by after the attacker got initial access before they're picked up. Yeah, and a, a lot of times that's because they're they're sitting on the inside, not necessarily doing a whole lot. Sometimes just the systems are really bad, and and the uh, the indicators, you know, they're they're not going off because they're not there. But a lot of times they they're just sitting patiently gathering information. Uh, they'll, they'll find an exploit, they'll turn something off, they'll turn one of those, those alarms off, uh, they'll, they'll find a way around it, and, and they'll just patiently work their way and wait until they can get to a point. And then the, <laughs> the reason you know that it happened is because, wait, all this data is gone or, or, or everything has changed. And well, you know, they, they've been there for a long time. They've been working, yeah. working their way through. Yeah. And so that's a good point because I mean, most of the time that when that day comes, when you know they're there, it's because they've performed and successfully performed their attack. It's not like, oh, we finally found them on day number 300. It's like, oh, we've been waiting here 300 days. Let's get them. So, yeah. So. Yeah. I've, uh, when, before I got into pen testing, I was working um, as like IT support at an MSP. And we had a client. <laughs> and this attack is probably the most sophisticated real life attack I've seen um, where they had an I in their domain name. So like their email addresses were whatever at company.com or companies.com. But instead of the I, uh, the attackers purchased a fake domain that was the same exact thing. The only difference was instead of an I, they used an L. So it was whatever at companies.com, but with an L. Right. And they had successfully fished the like payroll like the main payroll person at this company um and i i don't know if it was just payroll i think like accounts receivable and stuff like that too but um anyway the this mailbox was compromised and the attacker sat there for they had to sit there for at least 90 days or more and this was a customer of mine um and what ended up happening is the attackers were just sitting there watching that mailbox and they waited for the perfect opportunity and they saw an outside vendor was expecting like a, a $30,000 payment that they had to mm. send with a certain way. Like typically you send money to this vendor doing the same thing that you do every month, right? Um, yeah. But what, it, what ended up happening is the attackers used that fake domain name. They copied the exact email thread. They copied the signatures and made mailboxes that looked just like that vendor they were talking with. So now you have this fake email thread and the only the only thing that made it like the only way you would know this wasn't legitimate is based on that domain name which instead of an i had an l and also they were asking hey actually we need you to wire the money using this information and the the the, the my client saw that and if she was just properly trained to know hey this is fishy i shouldn't be doing this right. um, then she probably would have caught it but she wasn't properly trained. She didn't know the questions to ask. So when she was told, hey, our, our payment stuff has changed, you now have to wire the money to this bank account. She was like, okay, I mean, that's weird. I haven't had to do that before, but okay, here you go. And $30,000 later, <laughs> you know, the attackers are, are done with that attack. Um, and they were in and out before we even knew they were there. Yeah. We, have, we had one like that too. But we caught it. They caught it beforehand. They even made a receipt with like letterhead on it and hand wrote a note, hand wrote an invoice. Yeah, that's crazy. So, Carlene, the question you had was like, "What do I do? Like, this is all too technical for me." I think the I think the answer is you find somebody who understands it. You know, and I mean, you really have two options. You can you can sit down and you can learn and understand it all yourself. But if you're running a business, you probably don't have the time for that. So then you've got to find someone that you can trust who knows about this stuff and stays on it. So you 
you can ask them the questions and they can get you the answers. And I love David's answer about staying somewhat, you know, maybe spend a couple hours a week or whatever, learning about the right questions to ask, because then you can go to that consultant that you use and you can say, hey, so I, I learned about this vulnerability. Can you just make sure that I'm covered from it? And I think challenging your IT people and challenging your vendors that you work with. I think that if more people did that, we wouldn't have the type of headlines that we have every week about all these crazy data breaches, right? Because if vendors don't have to be responsible, <laughs> they probably won't be because they can be more profitable, you know, if, if they're not, if, if that makes yeah. sense. And I'm not saying that that's happening, obviously, at Strix, but I mean, like, other well, I hope not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I, I I will say that that I I completely agree with you that that I appreciate when when our clients challenge us and and they ask us questions and it's been those questions that that have it, we're not going to catch everything right. uh, and, and it's been those questions or or somebody looking at at something a little bit different that says oh you know what that that could be we we have a lot of stuff in place but i'm not sure how we would catch that and so how do we make sure we catch that and and what what ends up happening is we'll take that piece of information and now we're able to use it on on everybody that we take care of and and so you know carlene based on a question that you asked you become a superhero for all of our clients because you challenged us to to think and and look at something and, and we didn't have that answer. So I, I appreciate that. And, and Harley, to your point about, you know, IT providers out there, um, I, I was having a conversation yesterday with a, with a colleague about the, there are far too many IT companies out there that are grossly negligent. Mm. And if, if you as the business owner are not asking questions do not do not assume that your IT provider is taking care of you and and blocking everything that's out there because it's it, it, they're they're just way too many grossly negligent IT companies out there to to feel comfortable with that. Ask the questions. Look at your bill. If if you're not paying a little bit more for IT than than you thought you should, if you're trying to get the the cheap version of IT the the way that you're paying for that is with some rather large gaping holes probably so um I just uh, that that's harley you mentioned that and it's happened to come up a, a few times this week um so i I'm, I'm i appreciate you mentioning that yes yes and a great point about passing it forward passing it on you know um they, we get reached out to about like, hey, we saw this article. Are we covered by this? We, I, I read 10 hours a day, but I don't, I don't get everything. And uh, so it'd be, it, it's great when with things are brought to our attention. It's even better when we get to explain when someone approaches you like that. You get to explain maybe, maybe we've had that in place for a while, and they just never knew it. So then we get to explain, which is always fun because they. They're at a point where they want to know what that service is that you're doing. We might have told them before, and they're just like, "Well, whatever," you know. Um, but that's that's always a cool point. But yeah, if we, as every company involved, if we see something and pass it on, um, or you know, if QuickBooks sends something to one of our clients saying, "Hey, there's a known security thing," and they pass it on to us, that's that's great. I mean, we we really really love that. Um, David did write something in here. Yeah, it, are there any good uh, resources for small and medium businesses to keep up with general IT security trends that are considered best practices? We have quite a few and, and I'm, uh, I'm gonna struggle to remember exactly what they are because I'm being put on the spot here, but we, <laughs> we have RSS feeds that are running that gather information and, um, so Info Security Magazine is one that we keep an eye on. Um, dark Reading, darkreading.com. That, that's an interesting one. Some of the things get, get fairly technical with darkreading.com, but um, it, not, not all of it is. And so you, you can see some, some good stuff there. Uh, know Before, 
So that that's, that's a good one. Yeah, blog.nobefore.com. That's a great one. They they are built here. Let me I'll I'll put that one in here. Uh, yeah, Kreb, Krebs on security, right? Yeah, that that's uh, that's in the news these days. Uh, yeah, longtime cybersecurity expert there, Krebs. Uh, let's see, blogs or is it blog or blogs? Blog. See, I'm gonna. That, that's how easy it is to trick you. You just change it to blogs, and all of a sudden, Someone everybody ends it. up on a phishing site at nobefore.com. That that's a a really good one there. Um, it 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 breaks things down, Carlene. I, I would say as a as a business owner, that would be one of the best places to start because it it um it's specifically built to keep it at more of a layman's level so that you can recognize things. Um, yeah, so that that that's a a couple of them there. Yeah, um, there there are more if you just do a, a search for. Um, small business cybersecurity on Google. You'll find plenty of outlets out there. Uh, Sophos has a lot of good information, S-O-P-H-O-S. Uh, they, they're, they're very um, educational. Yep, Harley, good to see you. So uh, it, thank, thank you for stopping by and sharing your stories with us. All right, well, we are kind of, Getting to the end here. I, I didn't see anything pop up on the Facebook, um, the Facebook. <laughs> uh, so, David, um, I mean, what before we head out? What's a couple approaches that you think where um, you think Strix stands out with the approach they take with their clients? I, it, I, I think really the the biggest thing is that. We, we take that, that education part and we don't assume that just because we are a technology company that do this day in and day out, that we know what's going on. Uh, we spend a lot of time reading and looking and finding the holes. Um, I, I, can be, I can be quite paranoid and that, that serves us well in this incident because I, I see someone like, oh crap, you know, I, we got we to gotta protect ourselves here and protect our clients. And that, that, that's a, a huge hole. So I, I think that's, that's one of the things when, when you're in the weeds of this day in and day out, you can get a false sense of security that you're seeing the stuff that's out there and you've got the protections. And they, th those protections expire so fast these days that, um, you know, we, we stay up to date and, and I like these chill with gyms because they, they, they also force us to, yeah. to stay up to date on things that are going on. Um, and, and so I, I think that that stands out for us. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us uh, during and joining us on the zoom side of things, Carlene and David, Bren, we appreciate you guys coming on and all those out there in Facebook watching, we do appreciate all of the support. And, um, you know, appreciate and any of these questions, all the feedback is really amazing for us because it gives us good content. But then all these questions we get, they really help us kind of keep thinking outside of the box and push us to really find the best way. Because, you know, when we get asked certain questions, it might stir up those, you know, gears where we, th we think of something even better. So. It's really good to have the engaging conversation back and forth. Um, David, what do we have going on next week? Well, next week, I mean, obviously, it's it's the day before Turkey Day, day before okay. Thanksgiving. So we've got to talk about Thanksgiving. Um, we are going to be doing some some tech trivia. So, Carlene, come back. You, you've been. This is where it pays off. Okay, you you've been sitting here listening. Uh, we're going to do some some tech trivia, maybe maybe some Thanksgiving trivia in there as well. And whoever wins wins the trivia, I, I don't I don't know if we've decided how you win, but whoever wins the trivia, they're going to get a, uh, a a gift card to their favorite restaurant. So um, you know, study up. You know, it, it, David's going to be back next week because he, he's already studying for all these certifications that he's landed. <laughs> so he's going to come in and try to clean up. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> <laughs> so join us next week. It will be a fun one, laid back. Um, coming before you hit the hit the food too hard. Come and uh, come and hang out with us. We and had to go lighthearted next week after after we did today. That's like you guys rotate. Like let's scare the crap out of everybody. <laughs> And then we'll come back and do something fun like you know toys to give away for the kids and then come back the next week like here's how we're going to ruin your lives huh? <laughs> <laughs> like a stephen king novel like ups and downs ups and downs emotional roller coaster well again everybody thank you for coming on out and we will see you next week the same chill time at the same chill network we will see you then adios Thank